Right, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This is the bottom line, and of course, my name is Kwasia Free. We are coming away live from our studios here at Rage in Accra. Now, tonight we turn our lenses on the cooperation, the National Development Planning Commission. Commission. So let me be specific with that. How many times have you heard the country developing a path that everybody needs to tow, especially in the line of economics? That will ensure economic development. That will ensure the creation of employment for the young people of Ghana. That will ensure the construction of roads. That will ensure a stable currency. That, that will ensure a stable um, electricity or power supply, and so forth and so on. In the areas of agri, in the areas of aviation, I mean, the entirety of the economy, every government comes to power with what they call the manifesto, with their promises and with the things that they want to do by the end of their term, we come up, of course, those of us who are journalists asking them questions at the end of their terms, and when they are on the campaign train as well. We've seen Dr. Mahmoud Baumia um, putting out a number of promises. We've seen uh, John Dramani Mahama also putting out a number of promises and restructure of the economy and so on and so forth. How committed are they to these promises that they gave us? There's, there is a commission that I've mentioned early on, which is the National Development Planning Commission, which is supposed to make sure that the country toes a certain path or a particular path. Has that been happening? Have you heard about the 40-year development plan? Did you hear about the five-year development plan? Did you hear about Kwame Nkrumah's development plan? And did you hear about all the development plans? And currently, have you heard about the Agenda 2050? Seven. Tonight, we are privileged to be having the Director General of the NDPC here in the studio. And we are going to ask him very few questions. We'll allow you, if time permits us, to put across your questions as well. What is the vision of the country? What is the plan of the country? Why is the dollar spiraling out of control? And why is the economy not being curtailed as it should be? We'll have him tonight here in the studio in a short while. You want to stick and stay with me? After this quick break, when I come back, we'll get straight into our interview. Stay with us. We'll be right back. So you all come back from the break. This is still the bottom line. We see business at the speed of thought. And tonight... As I've told you early on, we are discussing or we are trying to unpack Ghana's Vision 2057, where we want to be. Of course, it's, it's very good to plan your life, plan as a country, plan as an individual in whichever organization uh, that you are, you need to plan. And so tonight, our focus is, is on the NDPC and uh, Dr. Kujo Isain Mensa Abrampa is the Director General of NDPC. We are privileged to have him here in the studio. Doc, let me first of all welcome you to the studio. And uh, it's been a while. I hope you've been doing well. Uh, we've seen you in the media lately, um, addressing the press conferences and the questions that are coming from, of course, all of us. Please kindly put on your mic for me. I'm told that... Uh, right, so let me once again welcome you. To Thank the you. Studio. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're doing well. Doing very well. Mm. So I've told everybody that tonight we are unpacking Ghana's vision 2057. I don't know why my producer chose to use the word unpack. I, I, um, it looks a, big, a bit big for me. <laughs> I mean, the entire vision of the country, 2057. But let me start it this way. And I have it here. We've seen a seven-year development plan of the National Development Planning Commission um, from 1963 to 1969. The Ghana Poverty Reduction Strategy 2001-2003, the Ghana Growth and Poverty Reduction Strategy 2004-2007, and so on and so forth. I remember the last one we had um, was uh, by, by, by your predecessor, um, Dr. Nimoy Thompson, which was the 40-year development plan. In fact, the first question when I posted this from someone was, what has happened to that? Well, let me say that... Uh Yes, uh, basically we've had two long-term plans, if I should put it that mm, way. Mm. If we should add the 1951 mm. uh, also, then mm. we should have a seven-year development plan that time. But the two 
long-term development uh, plans we've had is the 20, uh, uh, Vision 2020, mm. which uh, we all know about it. And we just implemented the first phase of it, which was from 96 to 2020, mm -hmm. uh, 2000, and that was it. The 40-year development plan, very good document, very good, you know, uh, plan prepared. And therefore, nobody has thrown it away, no. It's a very good technical document. It has a rich information, mm -hmm. but there was a need to review it going forward, mm -hmm. given the problems mm -hmm. that we identified mm -hmm. with the planning system as a whole. Mm -hmm. Which are? Uh, the first one has to do with the fact that you know, a long term is a vision. Immediately you make the vision that specific mm -hmm. to activities, to projects. Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult. Difficult in the sense that it is very difficult to predict activities, you know, in a 40-year range. And therefore, it is good to end up at a certain level. And then you evolve what we call medium-term plans, which breaks it down with the details as you move on. Once you come out with key activities within a 40-year plan and quite specific as it is, it tends to become more prescriptive but in, no, in no, the sense no, that... You, I'll, I'll side with you on one point yeah. and may differ on another point. Yeah. In the context of um, um, structural developments, yes. for example, yes. construction activities yes. and so on and so yes. forth, like the construction of a stadium, yeah. like the construction of maybe multifaceted um, resource centers yeah. and so yeah. on and so yeah. forth, that can still lay within the 40 years. But, of course, with Let me put information technology, yeah. with the yeah. inflow of information, yeah. Yeah. every one year or two years, it is changing. Yeah, so, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. If you can talk about the need, you talk about construction. Okay, mm -hmm. we need 10 airports. Mm -hmm. That is key because mm -hmm. then you look at the economic activities, the population right. and all that. Right. But once you make it specific in terms of location, mm -hmm. in terms of the size, in terms of what it ought to Fair be, enough, then it. you projectize it. And living in a range of 40 years mm -hmm. makes it, it could make it relevant. Mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore, it is good to reach a certain level in terms of the visionary process. And that is what a long-term plan does. Then you have medium-term plans, which takes it four-year range as it is, and quite specific, specific to the standard it has to lay down the activities mm -hmm. and come out with a fiscal component which show distribution of resources. Mm -hmm. The other thing, so that is one of the things we, we realized. Again, governments also negotiate with citizens. They receive a mandate to rule. And that's so they should have a space to influence the planning process. Mm -hmm. That is key. And the influence of the government in the planning process often has to do with the specifics, which is within the medium-term range. Mm. So immediately you pin them down on activities within the long-term process, then it becomes difficult for them to negotiate, right. to have that technical, right. political interface. Right. right. So, so, so you, you are trying to say that, yeah. if I'm getting you right, yeah. the negotiation probably may have happened. But that's a one-off negotiation. Exactly. And not a continuous exactly. negotiation. Because so, now they've been pinned yes. to the projects, exactly. which means that in the next 40 years, whether you like it or you not, this has to be done. You don't have the right to come Fact back to change you got it or it to very review. Right. You got it very right. So what we have done is that, basically, the, the agenda, you know, Vision 2057, mm. is predicated much on the information which has already been guarded and right. analyzed right. in the 40 year level mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we've restricted ourselves to give a space for this political technical interface. Mm -hmm. First, to identify what is our aspiration as a country, which is well enshrined in almost all our plans. Mm -hmm. And then you come to the next one, we look at the goal. What are we aiming at? Mm -hmm. Giving these aspirations. And then you move to the next level, which situates it within the context. What are the objectives? How do we measure it? Okay. And then the next level is look at what are the targets? So you are very specific on the measurement. Right. That this is what we hold every government accountable for these targets, which we are put here. And then you put them in a range of specific years. So within the next four years, what do you expect? The next eight years, the next 12 years, and then you move on and on. That is how you, you identify a long-term plan. Mm. The other thing is that then you leave the specific projects and activities to the medium term. 
The other thing which we've also taken from the 40-year plan is that there is, in, in addition to the plan, there are certain things which happened within the implementation range, pushing it on the medium term. One of it had to do with the COVID effect, which had a huge impact. Then it was continued with the conflict. Mm -hmm. So it really made some of the assumptions quite untenable and quite something that we needed to look at. So once you touch these assumptions, there was a need to then recalibrate to, to be able to put in them within but, the but, range. But, but on, the point of the, of the, on the point of yeah, the COVID, yeah. and, and, and maybe yeah. Russian Ukrainian war, yeah. they couldn't have envisaged that you are an economist. I mean, you, yes. you are the, 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 the doing that we are learning from. So you. there was nothing so wrong with in that. In planning, yes. obviously, if, if things like that, catastrophes yeah. like that, yeah. haven't happened before, yes. when you're planning it, it's difficult to put it in the context no, you, of... you of, never of, anticipate. Right, you never you make anticipate. Assumptions. You make assumptions. But when it happens, yes. that you this is going to, to derail the process, you go back and review. So it's a review not based on that, rather than the entire document being fixated. No, and so you have I've, to I've made two arguments. Right. One is to take out the specifics, mm -hmm. to make it quite flexible mm -hmm. for it to interface. The mm -hmm. second one is to touch with some of these assumptions, mm -hmm. which definitely you know that you're not going to make it. If you assume a growth rate right. of 7% and you hit only 0.9%, mm -hmm. you definitely need to look at it mm -hmm. and then look at the process. And then how we come back to the trajectory of about 7% you know, growth rate. These mm -hmm. are things that we looked at. So it is very much predicated on that, but you've made it in such a way that it can respond to one of the key problems so that this political technical interface could continually be done on the medium term basis, whilst the long term vision, aspirations, the targets, mm -hmm. and the goals are kept intact. Because that gives a basis for citizens to engage, citizens to hold government accountable. And these are the things which has been taken up in the vision 2057. Again, we also needed to, to also change the expected per capita income at the end of 2057. Mm. Because if you look at the, the, the sorry, the, the, the 40 year plan. The idea was to be a developed country. But we realized that given some of the hitches we've gone through. You would only be upper middle. Upper middle, which is quite close and it's also quite genuine. It takes on a lot of our aspirations. So instead of going beyond, you know, a, 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 a per capita of about $10,000, we're making it at $8,500. What which do you is, say as an economist, you are being careful with your ambitions? Not that we are being careful with ambitions, but, but we are being cautious. realistic realistic, given what we're going through now, and the number of things that we would like to uh, it is definitely possible that put you may even go over the 8,000 to hit the Definitely. We'll, 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 I'm being very optimistic mm. with that, that we'll definitely go beyond. Mm. But we are also judging ourselves, given the environment and where we are going and some of, the, some of the constraints we might be tackling, not only as a nation, but within the region. And some of the ha things that are, being, that are happening now, it is good to be more conservative, than to be overly uh, uh, above where we, are, where we can reach, and that is it. I'll come to the thematic areas of, of, of the, let me call it agenda, Vision 2057. Yes, exactly. Vision 2057. Exactly. But um, I am careful to ask this, that um, yeah. is it not a review of the 40-year development plan rather than a new document? And so... People may want to call it renaming the 40-year development plan because you've had to make some changes in that, or you've put together entirely new ideas, new vision, new, and so you call it uh, Vision 2057. You see, there is one common thing, which mm -hmm. is the 2057. Right. And so if you are economist, So 40 years was to end are, in 2057. Exactly, and that is And it. Vision 2057 so is... So it's, it's just the 40 years mm -hmm. was targeted in 2057 mm -hmm. and Vision 2057. Mm -hmm. Basically, one common thing at the time will be 100 years. What kind of Ghana do we expect? Okay, so to that was the perspective in exactly, which you Exactly, exactly. So you realize that it is the same trajectory we are working on. Even if there's a deviation, there will not be a total overhaul. And that is very important. And that's what I said. A lot of the information in the 40 year, the one, but nobody wants to throw it out. No, it's something that we began working with it. But we realized that we got to a point where we need to tackle some of the assumptions. So the information is very good, the, the, and that is what we've worked on. In addition to the other existing plans, especially identifying some of the problems mm -hmm. and the past record, mm -hmm. because there were some of them which were done and did not see the air. 
are good documents, and, and it's, it's, it's in the repository of National Development Planning Commission. There were two seven-year development plans. We did not see the air. The 20, uh, uh, what is it, the Vision 2020, for instance, only saw the first phase. Mm. So we reviewed all that. We went all the way back to the reason that why the Nkrumah seven-year development plan, for instance, in terms of implementation, saw just a couple of years. So we've done all this analysis. Mm -hmm. So what we have here, and you see some of them repeated, mean the aspirations of Ghanaians, basically turns around what I call the five wheels of development. I was going to come to that. <laughs> I was going to come to what the thematic areas yeah. of this are. I mean, I've gone through the... I had the opportunity to go through the 40-year development okay. plan some time yeah. back. And I think when you came here the, the last time, we had a bit on that. And so what or how different is this in, in terms of your thematic areas? Yeah. And I think you've started that yeah. already. So, I mean, you can run us through that. Yeah, so there's a common thing running through most of our plans. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the thematic areas, as far back as, as the, the, the Gorgeous West plan, they portray almost the same similar to the economic situation. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was a cocoa mm -hmm. economy. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the social services. The focus was on education and health in the Gorgesbeck plan. When it comes to infrastructure, it was roads, bridges, and then the railways. When it comes to governance, it was to move us from indirect rule to closer to, you know, a, a trajectory towards self-government. These were the things. If you look at the seven-year development plan, it's basically present of Nkrumah present almost the same agenda. The economy, the social services, the infrastructure, the, the, the governance aspect, mm. and, then, and then it goes through that. So for the 40-year development plan holds the same agenda. The same, you look at similar thematic areas. What we have done this time is to deepen one area in addition. Mm. So we have the economy, mm -hmm. which is very important. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about it every exactly. day. With exactly. subtitles, so exactly. there are four of them looking at the rare sector, the fiscal situation, production, the structure of the economy, and all that. Mm. Then you come to the social policy, which is vital, and this includes a number of areas, you know, which we encounter every day: health, education, housing, sport, uh, the issue related to the youth, mm -hmm. and then the people with disability. All these are areas which are under the under the social and more. If you come to the issue of infrastructure, and this is a huge you know, itinerary of, uh, of, of areas. Okay? It includes roads and, and railways and water system. It includes energy. Mm. It includes also the, the, the whole issue with communication. It includes almighty ICT and all that. And, and then it goes on and on and on in terms of our infrastructure. Mm. It includes even the morphology of our settlement, mm. the role of our settlement, the mm. functions that they play, mm. and, and all the drainage systems, water, and all these things are under infrastructure. And for each of them, the good thing is that we have defined target, and out of communication and discussion and information we obtain from citizens, and the, the good rounds that we, it was made under the 40-year development plan, we put all these together to define certain targets. Governance is very, very key. The whole issue of, you know, uh, participation, especially if you look at the gender dimension, youth dimension, the relationship among the organs of state, the role of the fourth estate, the media and others, mm. and then the issue of peace and security, mm. corruption, mm. you know, and all these are areas we picked under government, the performance of the public service and its relationship in terms of service delivery, almighty decentralization, the role of local government. Mm -hmm. And then we come to a fourth, uh, uh, you know, a fifth area, which quite often has not been something that has been done in the past. But these are the response to emergency, coming from the COVID and the other experiences. And where we are going, the effect of climate change, there was the need for us to look at that. The whole issue of response to emergency, how prepared are we? Early warning systems, coming up with institutions that can respond to it, mobilizing resources that can be, you know, used to do that. And then we have a sixth one which is also something we've been doing in the medium term. But the, how do we implement this? What are the institutional systems? How do we report in terms of monitoring and the evaluation and any. reporting back the mm. citizens' engagement in order to make use of the information that we provided? So these are the, some of the things. But the good thing here is that for each of them, we have defined target, which, which would describe the aspiration we want to attain by the end of the period 2057. And then we fall back. 
the periods beyond that, you know, putting them in 10-year segments, and eventually we are developing also the four-year segment for the medium term. So citizens can look at it and engage that between now and let's say 2030, mm -hmm. what do we expect mm -hmm. in terms of the result in all these areas? In the next six years, what do we expect? Exactly. And then in the next 10 years, what do we exactly, expect? Exactly, exactly. So these are some of the things that we've done all the way to 2057. That is key, and that is what makes the difference. So citizens can engage our decision makers and be able to find out the extent to which we are going by this trajectory. You don't have to wait till the end of 2057. But a step in the next six years will indicate to you whether it will get us there or not. And these are the targets that we put in place. So in a, any area of interest that you want, you can be able to put your hand on it and say that, yes, the performance is good or the performance is bad, depending on what the target which is a reasonable target based upon scientific judgment and objective analysis we've been able to attain over the period. And that is key because if civil society, if private sector, if the youth wants to assess the extent to which we are getting closer to the point, the indicators and the targets that are defined here are very crucial. One of the things it does, mm -hmm. and from my experience in many countries, mm -hmm. that it also sets up a citizen government engagement. Participation of the Real citizen. Real yeah, participation. Mm. Because then you have a basis for engaging, an objective basis for engaging. And therefore, you cannot sing a praise to yourself or condemn yourself. But the citizens will know how well you're performing or how close you are to the targets and the aspiration in terms of entertainment. That brings me to a question, but I'm, I'll quickly want to yeah. ask two questions. Yeah. And I'll come back to ask it. I don't have a lot of time, but I'll still come back to ask it towards the end of the show. Yes. Is the commission effective enough? Commission is largely effective. Is it effective enough? It's largely effective. effective Technically enough. effective. Effective enough. Very, very effective. Effective enough. Very, very effective. But there are still challenges. Challenging the center. So this vision is only one of a system we are developing to improve planning in the country. This is one of the technical results. The other technical result we've been able to work on to attain is the relationship between plans and budgets. Because that is very key. And that's one thing we've worked on for the last four years. How do we make sure that our plans influence... See the day of light. Yes, through the budget. And that is key. And we have been able to establish that... I, I ask whether the commission is, is effective enough. Yeah. Because, I mean, we are here in this country where... Yeah. We are all aware the kind of power the Minister of Finance has. He yeah. determines what has to happen. Yeah. So all the ideas, the things I'm going to ask you, some of the details, especially on the economy, yeah. that you've exposed, everybody yeah. I'm sure should yeah. be happy yeah. with you and the kind of work you are doing there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if the Minister of Finance, and the follow-up question was going to be, how consultative was this document that you're holding uh, today is? Yes. Did mm -hmm. you involve... The new patriotic party, did you involve the National Democratic Congress? And how binding is it on them and their appointees if they get to power? First of all, are you effective enough? And how binding are your things that you've put in the document? And how consultative is your work? Consultation. We've been consulting since the day the discussion of a long-term perspective plan mm. was thought about. And this has been way back. So the question is, all these long-term plans, fundamental factor about them is consultation mm. and discussion. Mm. So you realize that almost the output that we reach in all these processes come back to the same point, the same challenges and the same issues. Mm -hmm. The other thing about what you said, whether it's binding or political yeah, parties binding. or not, political parties definitely have the mandate of their people to operate. Mm -hmm. The National Development Planning Commission has been given that authority by the Constitution, Article 86, and then also 87 by its uh, systems and membership. And these have been expressed in acts. Okay? And these acts have all been gone further to be expressed in legislative instruments. Right. And all this, what it tells us that this is how things are going to be done. The National Development Planning Commission must come up with a plan, all these functions are there. But there's one thing. Mm -hmm. One thing which I have to bring up, if you look at our whole, the directive principles of the, the state, almost everything that we are supposed to do is stated there. Then it goes on 
The challenge we face is the continuity because some of them takes a long term plan. Mm -hmm. If you look at legislative uh, the constitution, 35 7, it says that as far as practicable, governments, new governments should continue with the projects of the previous government. As far as practicable, how do you define that? So these are some of the things that we're doing. The technical issues of a vision and the public financial management system has been done. The, the flow is there. The next thing is to look at the legal challenges. So this is one of the key legal challenges. Who defines practical? This can only be defined through a constitutional instrument or a review of the constitution. Mm -hmm. So it's also the other prong which has initiated. And there's a, a, a committee which is doing already, the, there's a, a process of constitutional review which has already started. And the other one has to do with also, and that is a challenge for all of us, the membership of the commission. And this has come up by, you know, a lot of other observers. If the membership of the constitution is overly politically influenced, we have already jaundiced ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a commission which has 16 members selected by regional coordinating councils who... I'm not going to pass a judgment, but there's a strong political influence because the regional council is chaired by the regional minister and thereof. The other part of it is that it also has ministers mm. who are also sitting on it. So the key, and then we have unofficial, uh, ex-official members. That one, by dint of the constitution, they ought to be there. The director general of NDPC, the bank of, governor bank of Ghana, Ghana statistician, and the minister of finance. And then there are a number of experts. So if you look at it, it's overly political. Then it becomes difficult, very difficult, for members of political parties which are at variance or which are in opposition to, to really continue with the process which has been started by certain institutions. So we are also looking at that in terms of membership, one of the areas which has been tackled by the Constitutional Review Committee critically. The third area... So I've talked about the technical area, yes. which is practically fixed, yes. the, the legal area, mm -hmm. which, is, which still is in the, the, the review process. The third area is political. Participation of citizens, very key. And then engaging political parties, very, very key. Engaging political parties is what we are trying to solve. Once you establish the vision, you establish the, the objectives and, and the target, but political parties are not restricted in any way to come in now with strategies and activities to be part of this process within the medium-term dialogue. So political parties, the first is to provide the information, the guidelines, which has been provided for them. It is up to them. Nobody forces the political party how they write their manifesto. Mm -hmm. But if I were to be a leader of a political party, I would take the plan to consideration because that is be the means are of we, are assessing... Are we going to get to that point where you would... Forcefully force them. No, you can't force anybody. Right. Not even in, the, in the, any country you where... An authority? Not in any when country. When you become an authority and you put it You together. can't force. We are even be beyond an authority. We are a commission of the yes, Constitution. Yes, of course, okay, you're a commission. Commission of the Constitution. But you can't force. In democracy, you can't what do we force. do? That is... And you can't do go... You intend to go to You see, court you can't go to court when you are part of the government. So it's kind of part of the review. Where NDPC... The assertion is to be independent as far as possible so that if there's a process, you cannot, you know, hold yourself against the government. No, mm -hmm. but you can then deliberate on the government on a more, you know, uh, what I call an equal platform. So that is very, very, very key. Look, um, I, I thought I was to go on break, but I, I think yes. that um, my producer is allowing us a time because we don't have a lot of time. Yes. And I will move away now from that and come yes. back to, to your thematic areas. Yes. And, and um, again, let me ask you a, a layman's question. Yes. Maybe a street question, if yes. you want to put it that way. Yes. Are you aware that the exchange rate, the dollar, is 16.02 is yes. against the city yes. now currently? Yes. You're aware? Yes. That is, it's, I know that it's around 15. Let me put it that way. It's around 15. Yes. That's if you are going to sell. But if you are going to buy today, it's 16.02. Well, aware. we use a rate. You use a rate. You, didn't you, say you are using the interbank exchange rate. I mean, <laughs> Let's the use bank the rate. Ghana, but which, um, which we're comfortable with. Whichever way, it's yes. still around 15. 15 you are aware. Yes. yes you are aware that... Um, and it's not pretty. Nobody is happy with that. You are aware that uh, uh, export prices... Yes. 
maybe diesel, um, yeah. um, 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 are also hovering around the same figure, you are aware? Well, those ones, those one, because so long as we import, anything that you import, once exchange rate is not favorable, we we'll also definitely go up. I'm going to come back to ask you the practicality of, yes, of, of your yes, document, but yes. I'm asking you these questions to ask how feasible, and I mean, from your point as an economist and NDPC, how the economy is running. Are you happy with it? Well, it is coming from a source, and that is why we have a long-term you know, perspective and a framework. You see, a lot of the things we are going through is not a trigger of what is happening today, just today, but it's been built on and therefore, there is the need to look at some of these issues within a long-term range. It's only my point, and that's where my question is within coming a from. Long because term range. You mentioned the Gettysburg economy. Yes, yes. Every government yes. has successively mm -hmm. mentioned Gettysburg economy. Yes. We are going to move away from taxation to productivity. We are going to move away from all of these and make sure that we have a production yeah. economy. We are able to curtail the dollar. We are able to control the, the CD. We are able to do all of this. What's happening? We still let, me, have let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Yes. You see, there are two things which are key mm. in every economy. Mm. <coughs> but do we have a solution to that? As you, yes, maybe you we have proposed a number of that. All right. A number of that. Okay. One of it has to do with production. Mm. You see, in this world now, we live in a competitive world which is open to everybody. Mm. If you enter an economy, the first thing you ask yourself is, what is the brand? Because just like marketing, people are attracted to come and invest in the country when you have a clear established brand. Mm. What are we known for? And I'm sure when you ask many Ghanaians, many, you know, the coincidence of coming to the same point will be, will might be few. It is key. So that is what we are saying. Now look, we need to brand ourselves. We need to prioritize. It's not having just a flat plan which responds to everything. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things we push up here. For the economy to develop, we need to prioritize. Mm. We need to say that this is where we want to go as our vision. This is the area we want to serve as a trigger for our development. And that determines the flow of the others because that determination determines, you know, brings along what kind of infrastructure do we need to establish. What kind of education do we need to have? What kind of social system do we need to operate? What kind of governance do we need to do that? And so that logic is very important. That's what we bring here. That all these indicators will lead us to a point where we will be able to prioritize. If you go to look at that, it is key. One of the things we've also pushed here is a governance system. Mm -hmm. We've talked about decentralization mm -hmm. from, you know, up to in times. But we're still talking about it. We've done a lot in terms of the administrative setups. What is happening in terms of the political setup? We still have a system where a lot of the decisions are centralized. But... The president made an attempt. But, Ghanians, Ghanians didn't agree with him. He made an attempt for... for, 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 for was it uh, uh, MCs and yeah. district assemblies to be voted into power and all of well, those ones? The attempt. But it doesn't stop us from looking at it. And that is key because it's definite... We cannot forget about subsidiarity, where things are done where best. It is closer to the level of implementation. Mm. We move from that, and you can do it. You can go around the country and many the globe and find out where development starts from, the base. And if the base is weak and decisions are made at the top, it's a problem. The other area which is important is the fiscal element, where the budget, an almighty budget, is done as if there is no a systematic, logical process of a plan which responds to it. If you go to the district, they do the same thing. They have plans and they have budgets. And we have done a study along it. And we realize that they are, a lot of them are divergent. Mm. For the last four years, as I indicated, this is what we've worked on. There is no way we can reduce and attain the production, you know, the constraints and attain the production targets. If your plan, what you said you want to do, is different from where you put your money. Are we going to attain the production We're target? definitely going to attain Are we go by, by 2057? We're definitely going to do that. And if we put our heads and our eyes to this process and respect the fact that it takes a gradual process which can get you to the trajectory and then you can glide to development, it is not accidental. You can't be doing things without a defined logic and defined priority and think that you can get there. We have had a situation where we have looked at many district plans. And when you look at them, I tell it, 
it becomes the Bible of development. Everything is there. Mm -hmm. Everything is important. Mm -hmm. Everything needs money. Mm -hmm. But that is not development. And if you put it that shape and you don't prioritize to respond to areas where you have constraints, mm -hmm. you will definitely come back to it. And that is how development is. And, and the implications of where we are tells us that we need to give a long-term shot, a long-term range, mm -hmm. a continuous, consistent process which can really solve the problems of this country, mm. which can link our infrastructure to economic desires, which can bring in and attract the needed investors when we are able to define our own brand and our priorities. Then the private sector will respond. But if the private sector enters and there's a market situation, it takes, you know, 80 days plus minimum to register, you know, a piece of land you like to take undertake an activity, it tells you where we are. And these are the constraints that we must and I take, take it up. In fact, in the document, it identifies these ones. The whole microeconomic sector, the issue of land, the issue of peace, the role of the youth, the functions of our settlement, the issue of infrastructure and the importance of it. And then it's looking at the whole issue which has to do with, you know, and I, and I take, I, I, I really emphasize that education. The kind of education we are pursuing and where we want to go. And all these are things you need to tackle. And I'm these are defined targets we have in the document to guide us to that process. I'm happy you, you, mentioned, you mentioned education. Yes. And let me read just these two messages. I'll come back to your, your social policy. Yeah. Ask one question there. Yeah. And I'll do one question on the infrastructure and ICT Good. policy. I mean, the practicality of it. I'll, yes. I'll read just two, just two of, of, of the messages that are coming. And, and so if you're watching us, we are still here in the studio with Dr. Koju Isim, Mensa Abrapa, who is the uh, Director General of the NDPC, uh, telling us about the path of growth for our economy and our dear, beloved mother, Ghana. Um, Prophet Judah Gold in Sunyane says, wow. I pray corruption and bad leadership will not hinder the progress of unpacking Ghana's vision 2057. And uh, Dr. Dankwa says, let's see how the vision 2057 gets implemented. The approach obviously will not inure to the benefit of national development. I am of the conviction that the politicization of some things doesn't encourage continuity in governance. God bless our homeland Ghana and make it strong again. And, uh, well, I'm getting lots of them. You keep them coming. If we make time, we'll yes. try as much as possible to read them. Now, you mentioned education. Specifically, I'm sure that, of course, within the space of the last eight years, you would have analyzed or assessed maybe some impact assessment or evaluation or review um, of the government's free SHS policy. I mean, we've come from the days of F-Cube, and I, I, the last time we spoke, you spoke about the, the, the will for, for us to have, not necessarily free, but um, an appreciable level of being able to pay, or an appreciable level of people being able to assess education. I mean, at all levels, specifically on free education, What's your policy like? Is it to review? Do we review free education? Or we still go ahead with the way it is, considering the impact on the national budget? Yes, I ask the question, mm -hmm. and I ask the question always. Mm -hmm. Look, there is nothing more expensive than having a child, a youth, mm -hmm. who is unskilled, mm -hmm. not knowledgeable, and do not have the ability to work. Mm -hmm. Then you are creating liability. Fortunately for us, we are in an era where the birth rate and the number of babies that I, let me put it that literal, mm. that we are giving birth to, the rate is reducing, which means that we have a bulge in the middle right. of a youth. Right. And this is a huge asset which can be turned into a liability. If you have many of them who are unskilled, not knowledgeable, and they don't have the ability to work, it's a danger. And nobody tells you that this is a gun that you are, you are putting a keg to. The other thing is that we should be able to link what we want to do with the kind of education we are pursuing. Mm. Look, we are number one in gold production in Africa. We are number seven in the world in mm. terms of that same thing. 
we are one of the few countries that is producing, you know, bauxite, which can be turned into aluminium. We fortunately, we are also a country that has, we call it just a position of iron and manganese. The combination of that could give you steel. These are the basis of industrial development. We fortunately, we have oil. And we even have the newer ones, the renewable ones, the transitional ones like lithium and others. These are clear natural opportunities which we can process and turn. We have all this cocoa which have been producing. We have good soil which can produce that. But the most important thing is that if you are still at the primary stage where you harness this and send them out raw. 75 years of bauxite yes, production. Yes. We still export. Exactly. Through the takra. Raw. 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 raw, raw so so you these get are the things that we need to do. How do you turn this? There is a whole program towards that. An immediate integrated program and all We have the GADEC yes. now in place. But yes. Are we but seeing you need skills. Yet? And the skills lies in where? The science, the technology, the engineering, and the others. To turn these things around from a secondary production, from a primary production to a secondary production. And this is what this plan is looking at. Mm. Turning this means that it's not just one side of getting the raw material from the belly of the earth, but having the knowledge, the education. Mm that you produce people who can tend this. Having the infrastructure that you are building to harness the development of this and building our industrial and manufacturing production. Look, way back in the, in the early you know, 19th, uh, 20th century, we had W.W. W. Rostow who came out with this theory mm -hmm. that you cannot stay in the primary and expect that that is developed. We want to move. Are we moving? We still have a structure of our development where we still yes. based on primary production. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the industrial part of it, take out the mining. Mm -hmm. The manufacturing is nothing to go right home about. Mm -hmm. How do we develop that? It is people with knowledge. I, I, I have these arguments with Professor Texan sometimes. Back yes. in our economy, we are trying to jump from yeah. the very primaries yeah. to where so the this. advanced people are, the yeah. ICT yeah. is there. Uh, we haven't gone through the process, as you quoted Rostow and, and yeah. so on and so forth. See, but we want to be where they are at, at all it, of a sudden. We haven't it, built on the agri, the yeah. agri mechanization, yeah. the agri business, yeah. and so on and so forth. It is, it is a process. Even when you jump, it is still a means to get these things done. There are countries that have jumped. And yet, they are using the technology and ICT and everything to develop the second Singapore grade. is an example. Practically, that is it. So... You can jump, but you need to jump well so that you can use those skills, the knowledge. And it's coming up. Look, our young people, the kind of knowledge that they have in terms of technology and ICT and others, we don't have it, to be frank. Sometimes sure. we tend to push them down, but we have to allow them to explode because that begins the fourth industrial revolution. They ought to be part of it. And once we give them the knowledge and the number of them, if you have a population where you can talk about 80% of them have experienced secondary education, then we are talking. So free SHS should continue in its current It form. is vital. It should continue there in its is current nothing, form. There is nothing more expensive than having youth without knowledge, without skills, and without... And whatever it takes to invest in them, we must. Look, I've already some, argued... Some, someone, has said, someone has said yes. that if, 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 if your child went to Morningstar, for example, yeah. yes. I mean, the amount of fees you're paying there is yeah. higher than what's being paid yes. in the... In the, in the secondary school. Mm. So there is no way. I mean, we can easily collate data, and that's available, that if my child went to, for example, mm. St. George's, it means I'm capable of paying. Why don't go ahead and continue to pay you and see, allow the rest who cannot see, pay to do that? You see, we always talk about the extreme, and we always talk about the exemptions. But look at the number of people who would have stayed at home mm -hmm. had it not been for the fact that mm -hmm. there is free education. Mm -hmm. These are practical things. Ask individuals. Go to the villages. Ask mothers. Ask fathers. And they will tell you the number of their children. They have six, and one of them has money to go to secondary school. What happened to the five? That is a solution, which is which, the problem which is waiting for a solution for us. And these are the things we ought to look at. Look, I heard about, you know, monies being, you know, saved in what they call the... the, the uh, a fund that has been heritage fund. Heritage fund. A heritage fund. You open an account in Switzerland and deposit it there. What they do and is that they, bring, they bring it back to you as mm -hmm. loans. Right. Take interest. Right. If you invest that in your children, it's an asset you are creating. And we must be innovative. 
And I think that if there's something which is good and giving results, mm -hmm. we have to support it as a country. If it is bad, nobody will tell you because it goes through reviews every time. But the most important thing is to improve upon it. We did a review in the medium term in 2020, and the document is there on our website in terms of these vital areas. And then it tells you the areas that we need to improve. We're going to do the same come the end of this year. We don't have a lot of time, but Daniel, yes. you asked a question earlier on, and it was on some routes, yeah. for example, Kuku routes being constructed in the cities, whereas where, when you go to um, um, Gambia number one in Kenya say, or mm -hmm. somewhere, where Kuku is actually being, farmers are there, we don't have the roads. And so um, transformation, transportation, and so on and so forth is a problem. It, Do we have a solution you see, in one minute? These are some of the things we're talking about. Prioritize. What do you want to do? Which roads are the roads that will lead us and link production? So that is vital. The selection of the roads must be on this basis. It's, if you have a road, it doesn't transport goods and people. It becomes a social road. Mm. You are only paying for it. Right. But these are the things so that we can prioritize. Which roads do we need to put our cocoa money into which mm. can give it the fastest return? Mm -hmm. And the engineers will tell you, economists will tell you, and important of the fact that that is why we have the Public Investment Management Committee and the PPP Committee, which is made up of not only the government people, but also the private sector representatives sit there. And that goes through a real cost-benefit analysis to be able to do that. Fortunately, this is an act of parliament, and it is there for us to continue. It, it follows that from the PFM, they have the PPP Act, and then we have the PIMO. And these are the things we need to establish and work on as a country. Fortunately, we are on a good path. We only need to implement and get citizens to demand. Citizens must demand. We have provided information. Use it as the basis to judge, to make objective judgment. It's not just talking, but based upon facts. And that's what we are provided. And I would expect that you don't wait till 2057. Come 20, 2020. For 2025, because these are the specific indicators which are being employed. You must be uh, citizens, not spectators. Yes. I'm sure that's, that's a summary of it all. Yes. So, uh, thank you very much, Doc, for your thank time you. tonight. We are we're privileged. You. Dr. Kuju is I'm saying the uh, same. Mesa Abrampa is uh, the Director General of the G oh, NDPC, NDPC, Director General National, National Development Planning. Commission. Um, Doc, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, this has been the bottom line. Uh, we turned our focus on the NDPC and the development focus, uh, Vision 2057. Uh, you must be a citizen and not a spectator. Go to their website, pick up the document, start not necessarily attack, but asking questions to the polit politicians when they come to you, not just the, the speech, speech, speech. Ask them what they intend to do in line with the National Development Planning Commission's um, Vision 2057. My name is Kwasi Afriye. Good night.